Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all. We are going to continue uh, with the next chapter which is topic 11, inductance. Okay, so this chapter uh, closely relate with the chapter 10. Okay, let's proceed to the next one. Okay, so basically before um uh, before this, I'm actually um introduce you with what does it mean by induced EMF, what does it mean by induced current. So I think um you already know that the induced um current basically is because of um changing of magnetic field, or we can actually say changing of magnetic flux. Therefore, after this, we are going for the mature induction. Okay, so we have two coils. Okay, and then um we have two coils and then what happen is is going to induce a nearby coil okay self inductions energy store in a magnetic field and lr circuit okay let's proceed with the first one which which is mutual induction okay so before we go with the mutual induction let's recall everything back okay so we have faraday law okay faraday law is basically a changing of magnetic uh, flux uh, through a wire induce and induce an emf in the wire proportional to the number of turn or we can actually say that a rate of magnetic flux a rate of changing of magnetic flux equals to oh uh, no a rate of changing of magnetic flux induce an emf so basically this is the formula okay so when you have a changing of magnetic flux you are going to induce emf which means that you are going to induce the current. That's, that's why we are going to proceed with the Lenz law. Okay, so the Lenz law, okay, so a changing of magnetic field, um, changing of magnetic flux, going to induce current, and this induced current going to produce their own magnetic field that to oppose the, or, uh, to oppose the change in the original magnetic flux okay so when it's increased the direction is going to be opposite where in decrease is going to be um in the same direction okay it's going to produce magnetic flux okay or we can actually say induce magnetic flux okay this induced magnetic flux going to be in the direction that opposed the original change in magnetic flux okay let's proceed with the mutual induction Okay, so mature inductance is about two coil. Okay, two coil is about two coil. For example, I have this like one magnetic, and I'm going to produce like this, so like that. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be this one, and then this. Right. Okay, example, the first call is basically the one that's going to produce a current. Okay. And you're going to connect it into the voltage. Okay, and then you have a second coil. Okay, second call. So I'm doing this one first. Okay. Second coil. So it's going to be like this. And this second coil example is connected to the ammeter. Okay, ammeter. Okay, so what happened here? Okay, so this is the first coil. This is the coil one, and this is the coil two. Okay, so when you connect to the potential difference, what happened is going to produce a current. Okay, so as you can see that before you connect it to the potential difference, your current is going to be zero ampere. However, when you actually connect it to the potential difference here, it's going to produce a current that increasing, right? Which means that your current is going to change from 0 ampere to 1 ampere to 2 ampere to 3 ampere and so on. So what does it mean? When you have a change of current, definitely you are going to have a change of magnetic field, okay? Because current affect the magnitude of the magnetic field. So, based on the formula B equals to mu naught 2 pi I over R, which you can see from here, the current affect the magnitude of the magnetic field. So, what happens when you have a change of current? Definitely, you are going to have a change of magnetic field. Which means that when you have a change of magnetic field, you are going to induce current at the nearby coil. 
at the coil 2 okay okay so means that okay so right now the directions of current here going to be in this direction wait sorry it's in this direction okay so it's going to be connected like that so it's going to be like this right okay so what is directions of your magnetic field here okay so use the first thumb rule okay you wrap your finger and your finger should be in the directions of downward same as the current here okay so when you wrap your finger the directions of magnetic field will be yes to the right okay try okay you thumb okay uh, you wrap your finger and then make sure that you follow the directions of the current which is downward so your thumb your directions of magnetic field going to be to the right so it means okay so it means that this magnetic field is passing through some area which in coil 2 which mean that is going to induce some emf in the coil 2 because why okay like i mentioned before when you have a increase in current when you have a change in current definitely you are going to have a change in magnetic field or you can actually say change of magnetic flux when you have a change of magnetic flux definitely you are going to induce current or induce emf in the coil too okay so now i want you to decide the directions of the emitter here which one going to be positive which one going to be negative a or b okay so example if the coil 2 the current is basically you can see that increasing okay so based on the lens law when um when the current when the change of current increasing the directions of the induced current going to be opposite okay so your b your b uh, produced from the current in coil 1 going to be to the right so when induced current is going to produce to the left okay very good so b induced going to be to the left and so what so the directions of induced uh, directions of induced emf going to be from b to a or a to b or which one is positive which one is negative okay so based on my based on the thumb rule also okay uh, based on the thumb rule also you are going to get your directions of a your your directions of a going to be positive and directions of b going to be negative okay why okay uh use the thumb rule okay the b induced going to be to the right so what happened is this one going to be like that so when it's flow so this is going to be higher potential a will be higher potential than b so a going to be positive and b is negative okay so basically right now you are going to use first thumb rule and lens law to decide the directions of induced emf at the coil 2 okay so it's going to move to move in this direction okay okay so it's okay we are going to practice the directions after this okay right now i want to show you the formula um of the uh, formula uh, for you to get the uh, the induced emf in the coil 2 because of the coil 1 okay so okay right. okay so first thing first the mutual inductance is going to be mutual inductance of two because of one. Okay, coil two, coil two that feel the effect of induced EMF, and coil one is going to produce the current that cause the changing of magnetic field over there. Okay, okay. So what happened here is we need to find the induced. EMF which is basically here how to get the formula okay so the mutual inductance mutual inductance okay mutual inductance because bec uh, from uh, two going to fill the induced EMF and because of current produced by the coil one so the mutual inductance going to be a uh, number of loop at coil 2 okay mutual inductance it means that uh which which coil actually feel the induced emf coil 2 and then the magnetic flux to one which means that one produce a uh, changing of uh, current 
which is produce changing of magnetic field, and coil two going to feel a changing of magnetic flux, which induce EMF in the coil two. And then because of what current of I one. Okay, so the mutual inductance, um, this one, okay. We are going to put it into the formula that basically from Lenz law, which is EMF equals to 1. Negative. Okay, we are going to put number of loop. Okay. D flux to 1 over DT. Okay, so this one, you need to rearrange the equations uh, up until it becomes a flux to 1 equals to M to 1 I1 over and two so you insert this formula into this one then you actually get emf equals negative n2 m21 i1 okay this one not going to be i it's going to be di because what you have a changing of current and then n2 dt so you cancel n2 you are going to get the final formula for the emf going to be emf equals to negative mutual inductance to one di over dt okay so from this formula itself you can actually see that the mutual inductance happen is because of you have a change of current and because of change of current you are going to have a change of magnetic flux because of change of magnetic flux you are going to have a induced current okay 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 so this is mutual inductance formula okay so what about we derive formula if Coil to produce current and then induce for the coil one. Okay, let's start. Okay, so the mutual inductance here one two, which means that two produce current one going to fill the induced EMF. Okay, equals to what number of loop one flux fell by one, which is one two because of current from where coil. Okay, you put into the formula EMF equals to negative N1 D flux 1, 2 over DT. The same thing here, you rearrange the formula. Okay, so you are going to get here is EMF equals to negative N1 M1, 2 DI over di and 1 dt okay so this one can be cancelled out so you are going to get emf equals to negative m12 di over dt okay so basically you can actually see that this one this formula this formula and this formula is almost the same okay but the difference is going to be which one that fill the induced EMF, which one that produce a changing of current. Okay, so here we can actually state that M12 and M21 is basically same. Okay, which you can actually see, uh, put that as a M only. Okay, mutual inductance. And you please take note, mutual inductance does not. Uh, affect by current does not affect by coil 2 or coil 1 it affect by what it does affect by size of the coil shape of the coil a uh, number of loop in the coil and the last uh, okay relative position of the coil Okay, example, if coil 1 and coil 2 is further away, what happens is if coil 1 produce current, changing of current, is going to produce a changing of magnetic field. However, there are going to be, to be a few magnetic field that pass through a coil 2. So what happened to the mutual is going to be less. Okay, That's why they're very important, the relative positions of the coil. And the last one going to be whether the ferromagnetic material present or not. Okay. So ferromagnetic material is basically material that produces a magnetic field. So what happens is when you have a ferromagnetic material um, at the coil 1, it's going to double the amount of magnetic field that pass through a coil 2. So it's going to affect the magnitude of the mutual inductance. Okay? So yes, okay? Therefore, this formula, we can actually change it to become 
so for the emf oh i need to put it here emf 2 1 this is 2 1 okay this is 2 1 is basically you just put this at the m because it's going to uh, have the same uh, value for both um m for uh, m for m for m2 m12 and m21 so it's going to be negative m di over dt okay sorry i forgot to put here this is because of current one okay okay yes okay so for the e uh, emf12 you have mature inductance and this is because of current two okay okay so you can actually see that the mature inductance we call as a proportionality constant okay the proportionality constant um basically mature inductance does not affect by currents in the coil one uh it is affected by this one size shape number of loop relative positions of the coil and ferromagnetic material whether it's present or not okay but the mature inductance here you need to understand that um is going to okay mature inductance is here okay i repeat for this part is going to be because of number okay the one that actually fill the induced emf is n2 okay and then the magnetic flux the change of magnetic flux is going to be produced at two because of one change of current and the current basically produced by current one okay so that's how you get the formula for mature inductance and please take note the unit for mature inductance is going to be henry okay okay let's proceed to the next one okay okay sorry let's proceed to the next one okay okay so i already uh, derived the formula for you okay so this is the formula for the mature inductance which i already uh give i already show it to you and basically the mature inductance uh, one of it the example is transformer okay and then you can actually see that um the mature inductance also used in the concept of pacemaker okay pacemaker where um power in external coil uh, which is the outside coil is transmitted uh via mature inductance to the second coil in the pacemaker at the heart okay so basically this time has the advantage in compare when you has a you when you use the battery um and this is basically it's replaced the use of battery in the pacemaker so this is mature inductance use in the pacemaker now okay 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 so now i want you to derive the formula for this one where we have a solenoid and coil okay so basically here the question asks you to find mature inductance okay assume all the flux from coil one pass through a coil two so we can actually say that the coil one here produce a current produce a changing of current which is produce a changing of magnetic field and the induced emf going to be filled by the coil two okay so the solenoid is the one that produce a current a changing of current and the um and the coil two going to fill the induced emf okay so how to do this question okay so first thing first please recall back the formula for magnetic field for the coil which is b equals to mu naught number of loop i over l okay so you okay flux fell by coil 2 because of 1 is going to be b a okay um a here going to be the one that fill the magnetic flux which is now is going to be coil 2 okay so i'm going to put here the equation is going to be mu naught n over l i a okay so the question asks you to find the mature inductance which is the formula for the mature inductance is going to be m to one because one produce current changing of current two going to fill the induced emf m12 which loop and one or n2 is going to be n2 okay n2 fill the induced emf the magnetic flux two because of one and who is the current which which current that actually uh which which uh coil that produce a current solenoid okay so you insert this formula into this one then you are going to get m to one going to be 
Okay, this one, okay, it's better for me to put the solenoid as the N1 just to make sure that we are didn't confuse there. So, it's going to be N1, N2, mu naught, I, here because of 1, I1, A over I1L. So, you can actually uh, cancel out the I1. So, the final formula going to be M21, which is mu naught n1 n2 a over l okay so this formula you don't have to memorize you need to derive okay you can actually put m2 m21 or you just put as the m only okay but please be extra careful when you derive this formula you need to know which one is produced the changing of current which one that going to fill the induced emf okay and please take note, M is not depends on the current. It depends on the geometry factor. Okay, let's proceed to the next one. Okay. All right, so now we are going to practice again how to find the induce, the directions of the induced EMF. Okay, so first thing first, okay, the first picture. This is the first picture. Okay, so basically here, the current produce a steady current okay is there any uh, changing of magnetic flux over there no so when there's no changing of magnetic flux is there any induced emf no that's the reason why you get no induced voltage okay so for the second um second diagram okay so you have a current over there okay so now you are going to use the first thumb rule okay okay wrap your finger wrap your finger according to the coil which is right now your current is downward okay directions of your finger should be downward okay and then okay where is the directions of b first okay where is the directions of b to the left or to the right is going to be to the right okay okay but now the the uh the question state that current decreasing when the current decreasing what directions that the induced current going to produce in the same direction or the opposite direction is going to be in the same direction which is the b induced going to be in this direction this is b induced okay so you wrap your finger again okay use the first thumb rule okay so you're going to get your current like this so what happened is um what happened is you are going to get this is positive or this is negative or there's another um simple way okay when you write your finger the thumb going to be positive the pinky finger going to be negative so when you write your finger so your thumb is to the right so your that's why it become positive here and become negative here there's a simple way that you can actually uh, do okay so let's try for the next one for the picture tree okay okay so right now closing circuit the current increasing so definitely when the current increasing you have a change of current or you have change on magnetic field so wrap your finger okay so right now your current is downward right your finger so the b here going to be to the right however when the current increasing directions of induced emf oh no directions of induced current will be in same direction or opposite direction yes good is going to be in the opposite direction so your b to the right so right now your b induced going to be to the left okay so okay right now your thumb going to be at the right and your pinky finger going to be to the left so this one going to be positive and this one going to be negative okay if you want to prove it you can actually you see that your finger is pointing upward so based on this direction you are going to get positive here and negative here okay easy right okay okay let's proceed to the next one okay so which solenoid and coil combination show in figure has the largest mature inductance okay please take note the mature inductance affect by what size shape number of loop and relative positions of two coil and the last one going to be whether the ferromagnetic material present or not okay so basically you can see here um c definitely no because example if the solenoid here produce a changing of current 
definitely coil here not going to there, there will be no magnetic field passing through so this is going to be no okay how about a okay a solenoid produce a b which is changing of magnetic field okay okay but as you can see that based on our formula for the magnetic flux which is b a cos theta and a here going to be normal to the normal to the face normal to the area so it's going to be here and and here is b so your cos theta going to be cos 90 degrees so means that the magnetic flux is going to be zero so this is also no okay how about c or d okay d same situation as a okay same situation as a because um it's going to be cos 90 degree and which one b or c definitely the answer going to be b why because as you can see that mature inductance does affect by size so this one the coil have larger area okay so when the when the coil have larger area what happens to the magnetic flux so means that there will be a, a lot of magnetic field passing through so magnetic flux going to be increased therefore it going to affect the mature inductance so the answer going to be b okay let's proceed to the next one okay so yes this is the same thing that you can actually practice okay so when there's no changing of current there'll be no induced emf okay so right now a current in the coil produce a magnetic field directed to the left okay the same thing use the first time rule okay you are going to wrap your finger which is your finger going to be pointed upward okay so directions of b going to be to the left okay so when i increasing the directions of the b induced going to be opposite which is to the right okay so which one going to uh, be positive okay which one a or b for example i put a and b a positive or b positive okay the simple way is you can see that when you pointing to the right your thumb at the right pinky at, uh, uh, to the pinky going to be at the left side so this one going to be positive this one going to be negative yes pretty easy okay uh, okay, when it comes to the I decreasing, I decreasing so means that the B induced going to be in the same direction, which is to the left. Okay, so to the left, your thumb going to be at the right, uh, left side and your pinky going to be at the right side. So which means that thumb going to be at the left, pinky to the right. So this one going to be A, so no, A or B. So B going to be positive and A going to be negative. Okay, so make, make sure that you understand how to get the direction because this question is one of the favorite questions they're going to ask you. Okay, please use the first time rule. Please remember about the Lenz law, whether it's increasing or decreasing, it's going to affect your B directions of the B induced. Okay, 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 so let's proceed with the self inductance. Okay, okay, if you only have you only have one coil, okay, so when you have only one coil, okay. Okay, when you have one coil as you can see that when you have one coil and they connect it to the potential difference okay so what so is there any induced emf definitely yes okay like i said before when you have a change of current from zero ampere and then increase to the one ampere two ampere three ampere and so on definitely you are going to have a change of magnetic field or you can actually say of change of magnetic flux okay this one going to be changed so when you have a change of magnetic field definitely you are going to induce currents over there because there's no call there so what happening is going to self-induce okay self-induce so means that um example if you have voltage here the current is going to be produced like this right okay so your b the the original b going to be in this direction right so when the self induced is going to produce a b induced that oppose the original change in the magnetic flux which means that if example this i increasing so b induced going to be in this direction okay so yes that's what we call uh, the self inductance it's basically the same thing as a mature inductance but the difference is whether you have a call um nearby or not but basically what happened is when you have a change of current you have a change of magnetic flux definitely you are going to induce some emf over there which means right now is going to induce itself okay so let's um 
Okay, let's uh, derive some formula over here. Okay, please take note. For the self-inductance, we are going to use L. Okay, mutual inductance, we use M. Same thing, uh, mutual inductance affect by geometric factor. Same goes to the self-inductance. It's affect by size, shape, relative positions of the material. Oh, definitely this one going to be of, not going to be affected because there's no coil. There's no second coil. Uh, it's going to affect by whether there's ferromagnetic material presence and the last one going to be number of loop. Okay, so the same thing here. Okay, the mutual inductance is basically affect by number of loop because it's self-inductance, so you don't have to put one and two. Magnetic flux is because of current produced, which is current produced is change of current and produce and then produce change of magnetic field, and it's because of the current itself. So you get this formula, you put into the Lenz law, which is EMF equals to negative. And the flux, okay, I put it B here over DT. Okay, rearrange this formula. Okay, rearrange this formula. Then you actually get flux B equals to Li over N. Put this into this formula. Okay, then you are going to get EMF equals to negative N. Um, L, D, I, and D, T. So, you cancel N. So, the final formula going to give you EMF. Okay. EMF, this EMF is EMF induced. Equals to negative L, D, I, over D, T. Okay. So, you can actually see that the change of current here going to produce EMF induced. Okay. You got it? Okay, it's basically the same thing like mutual inductance, but the difference is whether you have a coil, whether you have a second coil or not. Okay. Okay. Uh, I need to mention to you what does um what is the function of this uh, of the self inductance or mutual inductance? Okay, basically inductance is um inductance is going to add like a resistance. Okay, it's going to add like a resistance, which means that what does resistance do? is going to resist the motion of the current flow. Same goes as the inductance. It's going to resist the motion of the current flow. Okay. Uh, the other names for inductance, we call, okay, the other names for the self-inductance, we call inductance or we call as a reactance or impedance. Okay. So the other name, okay, is going to act like resistance. Okay. Um, so basically, what is the use of the inductance? Okay, um, like example in the transformer, mostly, the transformer has a resistance of only around 1 ohms, which is very, very small. As you can see that for the transformer, uh, there's going to be, to be a higher voltage. So what happens is when you use a very small resistance, it's going to burn the transformer. So that is the function of the inductance, where the inductance is going to resist, um, going to impedes or resist the current flow so it's not going to burn the transformer it's going to limit the current flow so it's not going to burn the transformer so that's the reason why we need to use the inductance here okay okay i uh, got it okay so let's proceed to the next one okay so this is some summarizations of mutual inductance and self inductance and please take note um the unit is all uh, for the self inductance also henry okay and then we present um this inductance by this symbol like a coil over there yes this is basically inductance symbol okay so when you see this definitely you need to understand uh, definitely you need to apply the concept of inductance okay okay so please recall everything back okay this one I already show it to you okay um how to find the inductance of the coil uh and the solenoid okay so it's basically the same thing you can actually use formula b equals to mu not n i over l so please take note n over l is small n so that's why you're going to get this formula which is b equals to mu not um i n okay so you have you use flux equals to B A. You put back into this formula, then you're going to get mu naught I and A like this. Okay. And then the, if the question asks you to find the self inductance, so L equals to um, number of loop flux 
and also current so you put this formula into this one you are going to get l equals to mu naught and hen i e over i so cancel this thing up so you are going to get mu naught and 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 capital n small n e okay basically it's the same thing like i did before okay so if okay so if you open this thing up you're get going n over l so you're going to get mu naught n square e over l okay for the mature inductance of the solenoid okay particularly it's pretty, uh, pretty easy okay just derive please don't memorize okay okay so this okay so now we okay so the, right now the question asks you to determine the formula for the self-inductance of the tightly wrapped and long solenoid containing entrance of wire in its length and whose cross-sectional area is a so i'm going to repeat it for you okay again just to recall everything back at the same time you try to recall the formula that i derived it for you just now okay so you have uh, b equals to mu naught n i over l okay so you put it into the magnetic flux which is b a then you are going to get mu naught n i a over l and and the question asks you to find the formula for the self inductance so it's going to be l do that first l equals to n flux over dt and sorry n flux over um over current sorry okay so you're going to get here l equals to mu naught n square i e over i so you cancel out this thing so the final formula for the self inductance is going to be mu naught n square e over l okay so you are going to use this formula to answer this question just insert all the numbers then supposedly you are going to get 7.5 micro henry okay okay let's proceed to the next one okay if example you have this kind of questions and the question just the inductance over there definitely inductance over there is going to represent the self inductance okay the question is going to say something that represent mature inductance like two coil exist to represent the mature inductance so this question is definitely for self inductance so this is practically very easy where you just need to use formula l equals to um what is the okay you need to use the formula for emf equals to negative l di over dt okay so because the question state here increasing at the rate of here which is this is ampere per seconds and then the question already give you the self-induced emf here. oh sorry the question state self-induced so definitely self-inductance okay so you can actually uh answer the question a if the inductor is a solar knot with four or five turns what is the average magnetic flux through each turn when the current is 0 0.275 ampere okay so how to do this question okay question b so means that the questions already gave it to you 405 turns which is definitely this one going to be n and it's going to is already give you the ampere so definitely you need to use the formula for the inductance which is l equals to n flux over current so l you already get from the question a i is 0 0.725 ampere and n is 405 turns then you are going to get the magnetic flux okay easy right okay let's proceed to the next one okay so these questions you need to do it by yourself okay and please try to find the directions which one have higher potential okay so now okay the things that you need to take note is the first thing first is is there any changing of current if yes decreasing or increasing so right now the question state about decreasing okay so first thing first you need to know the directions of e uh, of the b first the magnetic field produced by the current okay which is basically is uh the uh the the directions of uh b first and after that if it decreasing is going to be in the same direction also so which have a high potential a or b okay so this one you need to do by yourself if you have any question feel free to ask during online teaching okay so let's proceed to the next one which is energy store in the magnetic field okay like 
I mentioned before, energy store in for the capacitor is basically in electrophile. So now we need to find energy store inside the inductor, which is basically store inside the uh, inside store inside the uh, magnetic field for the inductor. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So how to derive this formula? Okay. First thing first. Um, as you can see that inductor act like a resistance, which is limit the current flow. So definitely we need to have a power over there, which which we need to have a change of energy. Okay. So basically, if it, if it acts like a resistance, means that the electrical energy convert into thermal energy. So based on the formula P equals to iv okay p equals to iv okay so or you can just put p equals to emf power equals to emf so emf you get from the from the previous formula which is you're going to get power equals to li di over dt because why before this is l di over dt okay and then we need to calculate the work needed to increase the current inside the inductor okay Okay, we need to calculate the current inside the inductor, the increase of current inside the inductor. So you can see that um, the power equals to work done over time. So you need to find the a small current first, which is power dt. Okay, so for you to find the whole, the total work done to increase the current, you need to integrate. Okay, so integrate here, which is you are going to get from 0 to i. So this one, you put this formula into this one. So you're going to get first way, W, L, I, D, I over D, T, D, T. So this T can be cancelled out. So you are going to get this one going to be, or the integration of D, W going to be get W. So this one you're going to get integrations of L, I, D, I. You're going to get 1 over 2, L, I square. Right. Okay. So this is from 0 to I. Okay, so basically work done here going to be equal to the energy store which we put as a U. So U equals 1 over 2 Li square. Okay, so this is for the inductor, energy for the inductor. Okay, recall back energy for capacitor is going to be U equals to 1 over 2 Cv square. Okay, so just as the energy store in the capacitor, okay, Okay, just okay like let me show uh sorry okay just as the energy store in the capacitor okay um okay recall back energy store in the capacitor which is going to be inside electric field for the inductor is going to be stored inside the magnetic field so we need to find the uh the relationship of the energy with the magnetic field okay so here you have the formula which is before i already put you u equals to one over two L I square okay and then you are going to find okay, example you take it as a solenoid okay so before this you derive solenoid is L mu naught n square I eh, sorry A over L okay and hopefully you still recall back the formula for B for the solenoid which is B equals to mu naught n I over L um you rearrange this formula first i equals to b l mu naught n okay so for both formula okay so both formula you need to put it into the u equals to 1 over 2 l r square so at the end you are going to get which is u equals to 1 over 2 l i square 1 over 2 l is mu naught n square i you know sorry a over l and this one going to be b square l square mu naught square n square okay so you can actually cancel out so you are going to get n square cancel out n square you know this one going to be one l is one so it's going to be one over two b square over mu naught L. Okay, what is the formula for energy density? Yes, you need to divide by 
volume okay so the energy density represent by small u so it's going to be al is the volume so you can sell out with the volume so you are going to get 1 over 2 b square over mu naught okay let's compare with the energy density for capacitor which is energy for the density of capacitor we're going to be 1 over 2 absolute not e square okay so for mu naught is permeability of free space so example if you have any kind of uh, different space you need to use that mu naught okay other mu naught okay so this is how you get the energy density formula okay okay let's proceed to the next one Okay, so in front of you, you are you um you are going to see there's LR circuit. LR stands for inductor and resistor. Like we do before, we have resistor and capacitor, RC circuit. Now we have resistor and inductor. Okay, so example, if you connected your resistor in series with the inductor and then connected to the potential difference. Okay, so what happens is when it's connected to the potential difference, um there will be a current flow however the current flow inside the circuit not going to be increased instantaneously Instant. no why okay like i mentioned before when actually connected to the potential difference there will be increase of current okay so increase of current means change changing of current so what does it mean? You are going to have a change of magnetic flux. So when you have a change of magnetic flux, you are going to induce current in inductor. So like I mentioned before, inductor act like a resistant resistor, which means that it's going to limit the current flow. So when the inductor produce induced current is going to produce induced current that oppose the original change in the circuit so example supposedly the circuit should be zero ampere suddenly it's feel there's an increase over there that it feels there's a change of currents over there is going to produce a induced current that oppose the original change in the circuit and that's the reason why the current inside the circuit not going to increase instant instantaneously is going to increase slowly okay so when increase slowly up until one time when the current is already reached saturated points okay example okay the potential difference when you connect example is going to produce 5 ampere example you already reached the 5 ampere is going to be constant right what happens when you have a constant current what happened to the inductor is going to be no induced current so well so it means that well there if there's no induced current there will be no resistance anymore and there are no be, there will be no resistance for their inductor so we can actually see that the coil itself act like a useless coil over there okay so it's not going to uh, give a resistance effect to the circuit okay so all the voltage drop going to be where inside the resistance resistor okay okay so it means that now when you have inductor you are not going to increase instantaneously okay so but until one time when there's current where there is a constant current the inductor itself not going to give you any resistance so it means that um the all the voltage drop going to be at the resistor okay so um okay so now we need to find a formula of current um that affected by time okay because as you can see that the current itself do, uh, do not increase instantaneous instantaneously so we need to find the formula for that okay so let's proceed for the derivation okay so i draw it back okay so you have a red you have a resistance here you have an inductor here and then connected um 
with the potential difference okay example if i have current in this direction the so, and then is increase so definitely here a and b um the directions of the induced current going to be in this one so this is a going to be positive and b is going to be negative how to find it use the thumb rule okay okay so use the Kirchhoff law okay then no Kirchhoff law okay so Kirchhoff law so this is going to be positive going to be negative so Kirchhoff law so as okay example i put the loop like this so based on the Kirchhoff law i'm going to get the potential difference of the battery positive okay and then minus the voltage of the resistance voltage dry resistance minus with the voltage drop at the inductor equals to what zero okay so v equals to vr plus vl so you come up with the equations vr is what ir and vl like we derived before l equals to di over dt okay so rearrange like rc before like rc the before okay so we're going to get v minus ir equals to l di over dt so you are going to get here is dt over l equals to di v minus ir okay so we are going to derive from um, from 0 to t dt over l equals to from zero current up until it's at the saturated points okay so it's going to be di v minus ir okay so this one you are going to get t over l and here you are going to get negative one over r um ln v minus ir i zero to i Okay, so uh, I here is the I max, okay? So, you're going to get negative. You transfer first to here. You're going to get negative. Okay, transfer also with the R. So, you're going to get R over LT close to ln V minus IR minus ln V minus IR. But this one, I going to be zero. Uh, this one, I going to be zero. Okay, so you are going to get so you are going to get um negative r of l t this is going to be ln v minus i r over v okay so how to cancel out the ln that means that you need to multiply by exponent so here we are going to get e equals to negative t you just read the like l over r like that equals to v minus i r over v okay tau which is time constant is basically l over r so i'm going to i'm going to change this one into tau okay so it's going to be e equals to negative t over tau equals to <coughs> um v minus i r over v okay so v e negative t over tau equals to v minus i r rearrange everything back suppose you're going to get v minus v e negative t over tau equals to i r so get the formula for i is going to be i equals to v over r uh, factorized going to be one minus e negative t over tau okay so here we can actually say that tau means the current going to be increased to its 63 percent of its measurement value okay like rc before it is going going to be 63 percent for one tau okay so for the graph you are going to get like that increase exponentially okay so one time is okay so one tau represent 0 0.63 i max and then when you reach i max over there the inductor not going to affect anymore 
so this is going to be i this is going to be time that's how you get the formula for the um for the lr connected to the potential difference okay so basically you can see that the formula itself derivation is almost the same like rc okay but the difference is tau over there is tau equals to rc this one tau equals to l over r okay what if you disconnect from the potential difference okay you directly okay uh you directly can uh, disconnect from the potential difference okay okay so let's talk about the difference between resistor and inductor as you can see that when the when you come to the resistor okay the energy is going to be dissipated as a thermal energy however when it comes to the inductor energy is basically can be recovered okay so when current decreases to zero um it can be recovered um from zero to some value and some value to the zero okay that's the difference between resistor and also inductor okay so for this one is the way for you to decide the directions of the inductor and the resistor okay based on the Kirchhoff law so as you can see that resistor uh inductor acts like a resistor so when you have your current loop and your current inside the circuit in the opposite directions is going to be positive okay but if your current loop and your current inside the circuit in the same direction is going to be negative okay so is you can understand this uh, same as like the way you understand for the resistor okay basically the same thing almost the same thing okay uh, okay this is the formula that i derived for you which is, means that you connect to the potential difference uh, but this one shorter across battery you are going to get this formula so how to get this formula okay i'm going to derive it for you okay okay so example if you flip the switch it means that you disconnected this one from the potential difference what happened is you um you are going to have a decrease of current inside the circuit okay this situation is about example you if you reach already your ims and suddenly you flip your switch which means that you disconnect from the battery what happens after that definitely your current going to be decreased however your current not going to be decreased instantaneously why not decrease instantaneously why okay same goes as the previous one okay when you decrease that when you have a decrease in the current definitely you are going to have a change of current okay so change of current produce change of magnetic field okay so when you have a change of magnetic field you are going to induce current in what in inductor so inductor going to produce induce current that oppose the original change of current inside the circuit so that's the reason why your current not going to be dropped instantaneously it's going to be slowly okay okay so it's going to be a example if um if the current actually decrease so means that the induced current going to be going to produce the directions same as the same to make sure that the there will be no change there will be no change in the original current okay so let's proceed to derive the formula if you disconnect it from the battery okay so this one same like rc circuit also okay you make a Kirchhoff law okay like before i put this positive negative positive negative right okay so v resistor plus v inductor equals to zero so v resistor equals to negative v inductor so v resistor is ir v inductor is negative l di over dt okay you rearrange the formula first up until you're going to get r over l dt negative over there you transfer the negative here you're going to get di over i okay so we are going to integrate from zero to time up until i maximum up until i we, we didn't put zero we put i over there okay okay so you are going to get this as a negative r over l t and this one you are going to get ln i and sorry this is i not i minus ln i not okay so negative r l t equals to ln 
I over I naught. Okay. For you to cancel the ln, you are going to multiply it by exponent. So you are going to get E equals to T L over R, negative over there, equals to I over I naught. Okay, so like I mentioned before, tau time constant is L over R. Okay, so rearrange the formula. Sorry, rearrange the formula. You are going to get I equals to I naught E negative T over tau. So it means that at this particular point, the current going to drop to its 37% of its initial value. Okay, so that's the reason why you are going to get your graph to be like this. Okay, it's going to drop not instantaneously, it's going to drop exponentially. Oh my god, this one, okay, this one, okay, going to drop instantly. So this one going to be the i max. Okay, this is i. Okay, so and then the first tau going to be 0 0.37 i max. That's the reason why this is the time constant means uh, at the particular point it means that it's going to drop to its 37 percent of its initial value. Okay, so that's how you get the formula for LR circuit without connected to the potential difference. Okay, so please take note, when you reach I max, it's going to be equivalent to the V naught over R because we're inductor. Like I mentioned before, inductor, when you reach the maximum, there will be saturated, there will be no change of current. The inductor going to be like a useless coil. So that's the reason why when you get I max, you only you use V equals to IR, then you get the uh, answer. Okay, got it? Okay, let's proceed to the next one. Okay, so this is the graph that I already derived for you, and I'll show you to you how to get the graph. Okay, so it's not going so it's not going to drop instantaneously, it's going to drop slowly. Okay. Okay, so and this is a final formula. Okay, so the questions are going to show you maybe the diagram. Um whether it's going to connect it to the potential difference or not. Okay, so please be extra careful with the formula that you are using. Okay. And please take note. Um, the questions for this one, maybe I'm going to ask you in terms of derivation uh, or maybe you can actually just use the formula. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed to the next one. Okay. So this is the functions of inductor, which means the inductor can act as a surge protector because once you plug in into the standard wall plug, what happens is, is you are going to have a sudden increase of current, which is going to damage your electronic equipment. So therefore, it inductor over there it acts like a resistance is going to limit the current flow which means that the increase of current not going to be instantaneously is going to be slowly okay so that's the functions of inductor which is as a surge protector okay okay so this is the one of the example of the questions lr circuit okay right now um at t0 a 12 volt battery is connected in series with 220 milli Henry inductor and the total of 30 ohms resistance. Okay, what is the current at T equal to zero? Definitely the answer is going to be zero. Why? When you first connect it to the potential difference, what happens? The inductor is going to resist the increment of the currents over there. So that's why it's not going to be boom, it's not going to be like increase instantaneously, it's going to increase slowly. That's the reason why at T equal to zero, your current still at zero. Okay. What is the time constant? Okay, based on the formula, time constant, well, tau equals to L over R. So, L is 2 to O, negative 3, resistor is 30 ohm. So, possibly you are going to get your answer, 7.3 millisecond. Okay. Okay. Next, what is the maximum current? Okay, maximum current is mean, means, which means that at a particular time, the inductor is going to be a useless coil. Okay, so means that your I max is going to be V over R. So it's going to be um, 12 divided by resistor, which is 30 ohm. Then you are going to get 0 0.40 ampere. Okay, question D. How long will it take the current to reach half? A maximum possible value so means that right now you need to use the their equations where the equation is going to be um, 
I equals to I max 1 minus E negative T over tau. Okay, so the question asks you to find time for the current to reach is half its maximum possible value. So half of it going to be 0 0.50 I max equals to I max 1 minus E negative T. This one we need to find. L over R, we already find it, which is 7.3 times negative 3 seconds. So supposedly T, you are going to get 5 millisecond. Okay. Okay. Okay, at this instant, at what rate is energy being delivered by the battery? Okay, at this instant, at what rate is energy being delivered by the battery? So, when the question asks you about rate, definitely is because of power. So, you need to use power equals to IV at this instant, which means at, that, at this half uh, maximum, a uh, current is, uh, current is uh, rich half of it. So it's going to be 0 0.20. This one you divide by 2. And then multiply by 12. Then you're going to get 2.4 watts. Okay. Okay. For the next one. At what rate is energy being stored in the inductor magnetic field? The question asks you about the rate. So basically it's a power also. But this one is quite tricky questions. You need to... Use okay, so for this question, you need to you can please uh, you need to use this one. I think you already remember that when you have P equals to IV, I equals to LDI over DT. So rate means that power, so you can actually put as a U over T, LI, DI over DT. Okay, LI, DI over DT. So U rate energy i l d i over d t okay i think this one you can actually refer back to the formula where l d i over d t is basically v naught minus i r okay you can actually refer at the previous one okay so you are going to get this one as energy which means that it's going to be I V naught minus I R. So I going to be um at this instant, which is 0 0.2. And the V naught going to be 12 minus I over there is ter uh, 0 0.2 multiplied by 30. So supposedly I'm going to get the answer is 1.2 watt. Okay. Okay. This one. Please refer back to the previous one where the equation LDI over DT equals to V0 minus IR. Okay. Okay. So got it? Okay. So let's proceed to the next one. Okay, so the next one, um, I give you the questions. Um, this one. Okay, you did you do it by yourself first, okay, without looking at the answer. Okay. Um you can actually refer to the answer, but please do it first. Okay, and you have any questions, feel free to ask during online teaching. Okay, okay. So this, so you need to do this question. Okay, so I already show, I already show you the working step here. But if you didn't understand, please ask me during online teaching. Okay, and same go and same goes to this one. I give you different kind of questions, a little bit different. Okay, so please um try it by yourself and please refer to the working step at the back. Um, if you have any questions again, feel free to ask during online teaching. Okay, so this is the solutions that I provided for you. Okay, so I think that's all for now. That's all for chapter eleven. Okay, make sure that you fully understand the LR circuit because after this we are going for the LRC and LC circuit. Okay, it's going to be a continuous. Okay, so make sure that you understand the behavior of LR circuit. After this, you need to understand the behavior of LC circuit. And after that, we'll combine everything which is LRC. Okay, so that's all for now. So I'm going to see you again with the chapter 12. So um, please study and please ask questions if you didn't understand. Okay, thank you very much and assalamualaikum and bye-bye.